at least six people have died in a stampede outside a stadium hosting an African Cup of Nations soccer game in Cameroon, an official said Monday. The governor of the central region of Cameroon said there could be more casualties. The stampede happened as crowds struggled to get access to a stadium in the capital to watch the host country play in Africa's top soccer tournament. Officials at a nearby hospital said they had received at least 40 injured people from the stampede. Soccer officials said around 50,000 people had tried to attend the match. More than a dozen mutinous soldiers declared Monday on state television a military junta has seized control of Burkina Faso after detaining the democratically elected president following a day of gun battles in the capital. The military coup in a country that was once a bastion of stability was the third of its kind in West Africa in the last 18 months, creating upheaval in some of the countries hardest hit by Islamic extremist attacks. One leader said the soldiers were putting an end to Kabore's presidency because of the deteriorating security situation amid the deepening Islamic insurgency and the president's inability to manage the crisis. It was not immediately known where President Rock Mark Christian Kabore was, and the junta spokesman said only the coup had taken place, quote, without any physical violence against those arrested who were being held in a safe place with respect for their dignity. NATO said on Monday it was putting forces on standby and reinforcing Eastern Europe with more ships and fighter jets in what Russia denounced as Western hysteria in response to its buildup of troops on the Ukrainian border. The U.S. Department of Defense in Washington said about 8,500 American troops were put on heightened alert and were awaiting orders to deploy to the region should Russia invade Ukraine. Tensions are high after Russia massed an estimated 100,000 troops in reach of its neighbor's border. Russia denies planning an invasion. The White House said U.S. President Joe Biden pushed for transatlantic unity in an 80-minute secure video call with several European leaders on Monday to discuss the Ukraine crisis. Kurdish-led forces said they raided part of a prison seized by Islamic State fighters in northeastern Syria and forced at least 300 of the militants to surrender on Monday. The Syrian Democratic Forces said militants were still holed up in other buildings and plans were underway to clear the rest of the detention complex. At least 180 inmates inmates and militants and 27 security forces have died since Islamic State fighters attacked the jail on Thursday in a bid to free their members, officials have said. Islamic State's news agency said militants holed up in parts of the prison and in the vicinity engaged in violent clashes with Kurdish fighters on Monday for a fifth consecutive day. The SDF initially said it had thwarted the prison breakout, but later acknowledged that inmates had taken over parts of the facility. Yemen's Houthi movement, aligned with Iran, launched a missile attack at the United Arab Emirates on Monday that targeted a base hosting the U.S. military but was thwarted by U.S.-built Patriot interceptors, according to American and Emirati officials. The attack, which sent U.S. troops into bunkers, was the second in a week on the UAE, the tourism and commercial hub of the Gulf region. Just Seven days ago, on January 17th, the Houthis hit a fuel depot in Abu Dhabi, killing three people. The Houthis are battling a Saudi-led military coalition that includes the UAE and have said they aim to punish the Gulf state for backing militias that are blocking their attempts to capture oil-producing regions in Yemen. A Houthi military spokesperson said the group had fired ballistic missiles at an airbase used by U.S. forces and other sensitive targets. He said it also launched drones towards Dubai, the foreign ministry of the UAE, called the attack a criminal escalation and said it had the right to respond.